Hello everyone! Welcome to a detailed mid-game guide on Bee Swarm Simulator. This video will have many sections, each timestamp so you can easily skip to or find what you're looking for. My name is Xnos and I've been playing Bee Swarm Simulator since 2018. I have three accounts, one of which is a secret, <laughs> and I can help you guys get to the end of the game as fast as possible. Before starting the video, please check out our Discord server and my Twitch link. Both links will be in the description. Enjoy the video! If you didn't already watch my beginner's guide video, make sure to have watched that video first. In that video, specifics had been left out as it was going to be covered in a future video. This is that future video. So please, if you aren't paying attention, you might want to. Buying your clothes in the mountaintop shop is the main priority, meaning the helmets, the boots, and the belt, and then buying hive slots up until your hive slot cost is the same or more than your porcelain dipper or porcelain bag. If they do cost more or the same, buy your missing porcelain gear. When I reached 35 bees, I already had a gummy bee, but I didn't have a vicious bee. I hopped around public servers looking for stingers to get a vicious bee as soon as I could. Once I got my vicious bee, I simply focused on my quests. The reason I did this is because ace gear requires stingers and can take away from getting your vicious bee early enough to be able to have full coconut gear once you have finished getting your second spirit petal. Your main priority once getting 35 bees, if you do not already have a gummy bee or a vicious bee, is tunnel visioning to get them. They're a lot more important than you'd think, especially the gummy bee since it's used for all your spirit bear quests. Yes, you can do other quests, I am not your mother, but if you focus on quests other than the spirit bears, more than the spirit bears, you'll be very sad because people will be progressing more than you. Having full gear is way more important than an egg or a star tree, trust me. In the game there are hourly boosters, the red HQ, the blue HQ, and the mountain top. Use these every hour, get nectar, and donate treats to the wood shrine to get guaranteed wins as a booster. I would recommend doing this once you already finish using all your three boosters. Think of this one as a secret fourth. There are so many ways to get materials now. You can get them from planters, puff shrooms, sprouts, killing mobs, killing bosses like the windy bee, completing quests. You just have to not use them as soon as you see something shiny in your inventory. Think of it as like, a shiny Pokemon. If you use it with no purpose, then you're just throwing your shiny Pokemon away, and that's really dumb. Only three amulets were shown in the video. This was not a mistake. You see, the shell and star amulets are very tricky to get, and no matter what you get on them, they will always be good, with the exception of Supreme Star Amulet, but we will get into that later. Now, the same thing can be said about the stick bug amulet, but the stick bug amulet is a lot simpler to know what you need because all of you will struggle to get a bronze or silver amulet for the most part anyway. Getting a good ant, moon, and stick bug amulet is a lot easier than a star or shell amulet. If you want to know good ones later on, when you're good at the game and unlocked a supreme shell and supreme star amulet, you can check out my colored hive guides. This game has a gray area in the middle of it, where you will feel like you are not making any progress at all. All of your bear quests will seem impossible, and the materials you will need to gather will feel like it will take years. The game is designed to make you feel that way. The game is meant to be hard because it is hard. If you don't focus too much on the fact that you're missing billions of items and honey, the game will feel a lot nicer to you. Don't beat yourself up you're because your friend got a gummy mask and you still can't even afford to be able to breathe. When you eventually get to a point of the game where you have a petal wand and full gear from the ace shop, you will have a hard time getting honey fast. The way to fix this is by getting better amulets or buying more hive slots to have more bees in your hive. I recommend being in the 40 to 45 bees range because this will allow you to have more bees at a cheaper cost. You can then play around with your hive and lean more towards one color to try and get the honey for your masks and coconut gear. With 45 slots, it is exactly enough slots to keep all your gifted bees as well as any mythics you got along the way. Try your best to gift event bees but not have them all gifted. 
it, as they can be put back into your hive at any time. They can be used for holding temporary unique gifteds while you try to get them all so you can finally use your star eggs. Furthermore, when you do get an endgame mask, try your best to keep a favor of more bees for that mask's passive to activate or benefit from. The hive in front of you is the hive I recommend having while you are trying your best to be mixed and finishing all of your important quests without you having a single mythic bee to carry you. Not every bee has to be gifted, but the inspire token does help. Keep in mind that this is for 35 bees and you aren't permanently stuck to only having this amount of bees as well as this hive isn't the exact hive you should always have, but serves as a baseline so that you don't have to wonder if your hive is good or not. Try your best to reach 40 to 45 bees without exhausting the honey that's meant for your gear. Keep mythics in your hive as well as a bear bee and any unique gifteds you have. You can get rid of duplicated bees as you see fit. Event bees can only be gifted through star treats, and so star treats should only be used for event bees until you have them all gifted. So, this is the order you should gift them in. Bear Bee and Tabby Bee both give you a boost in pollen collection, and so you'll always want to gift those two bees first. After that, you can decide between a Festive or Photon Bee. Photon if you need all the instant conversion you can get, or Festive if you want materials as well as that instant conversion. After that should be a Cobalt or Crimson Bee if you plan on going red or blue. If not, it should be a Vicious Bee. Last should be a Puppy Bee, because that bee is severely useless. I mean seriously. Seriously, Puppy Bee needs a buff or something. I want to say a quick thank you to everyone who helped me make this guide, as well as everyone who watches my streams every time I go live. You can catch one of my streams over at twitch.tv slash xnose. I'd love to see you there. If this video helped you out a lot, please consider subscribing, as I intend to make more Bee Swarm Simulator videos in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.